You know, it's just important that this this guy Riley has been a Renaissance man. He was the first guy who wrote a book uh, on World War II veterans, doing oral histories. Uh, hometown went to war. You spoke at the Hall of Philosophy, and and you you actually had three editions of that book, which was uh, certainly an inspiration for us at the Jackson Center to continue that. And you know, one of the guys that, that pushed me to finish that book was Dan Bratt. He said, if you finish that book. I'm going to get you in the Hall of Philosophy. He said, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I give Dan Brad some credit for pushing me into the end zone on that one. And then you, we continued your interest, and you were appointed uniquely uh, by Presidents Clinton and Obama to the American Battle Monument Commission. And so that whole World War II memorial that you see, the, well, part of that com the, the committee that designed it was Riley Kidder. There were five of us on that design committee from 1995 to 2001. We met almost every month in Washington. It was a heck of an experience, really. I got to know a lot about memorial art and design than I ever thought I would know. And uh, we got the thing done. And in uh, matter of fact, today, we're trying to get a history written of what happened. And I was on my computer today trying to help people that are doing that. So, you know, it's like sewers. It never ends. You know, you get started. <laughs> The project keeps going. Well, good segue to sewers. Uh, <laughs> Pierre, uh, how did you get involved? Well, we, we went through a little bit of your bio last time, uh, but you've been variously a uh, director, past chairman of the South and Center Chautauqua Lake Sewer District. How did your first interest get in? Was this because of a legislator? Just a, a, how did it all kick in? Well, that's an interesting story, Greg. I don't know if this thing's working, but okay. Uh, but first, I would like to say it gives me great pleasure to be here with my good friend Raleigh, <laughs> who you have certainly done a, a very good introduction of, and now I'm sure the audience understands why we refer to him affectionately as the great Rolando. <laughs> You're here. Um, going back. Uh, to when my, I first got involved uh, with sewers, I had just uh, been hired by uh, TRW Bearings Division, um, which was the successor to MRC Bearings in Jamestown. And I'd been working there for a month, and one day the president of the company showed up in my cubicle. And he said, Pierre, he said, there's something I'd like you to do. And I thought, okay. <laughs> Um, he said, your father was very active in lake affairs, uh, was a president of the Chautauqua Lake Association. I know you grew up on the lake. Um, the South and Center Chautauqua Lake Sewer District construction project has been shut down, and we're forming a citizens group to try and get together and see if we can find a way to resurrect that project. And I would like you to beyond that. And I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and that's where it began. <laughs> so the actual history of the South and Center Chautauqua Lake Sewer District really goes back to the late 60s. And I don't know who wants to kind of capture this, but we'll paint a picture of what it was like around the lake from just a, a, a septic system or whatever that would actually trigger a study by the legislature. Do you, you want to take a crack at that? Well, let me, Pierre can fill in the cracks here, but, you know, I, I w I've been going to county legislature until 1972, so in 69, Pierre did some research, that's when the first districts were created, 1969, so this project, to finally get it done, is a 15-year project, you know, things like this don't happen very quickly. Um, so when I got on the legislature, uh, it was already underway, but also that means that in 1969, the Republicans controlled the Board of Supervisors. We didn't have a county legislature then. And Dick Evans in Bemis Point and others were interested. One of the reasons is you could smell Bemis Point before you could see it a lot of times. I mean, everybody had septic systems in this little town, 50-foot lots, 25-foot lots. I mean, how does it work? It doesn't work. Um, and also, uh, there was a, and I'm not sure exactly the time frame of this, Pierre, but there had been a shutdown of development in the West Ellicott and Lakewood area because the Lakewood sewer plant uh, 
uh, on a rainy day would overflow and raw sewage would go in the lake. So the county health department had come up with some type of a moratorium, you can't build. Well, there was you know plans of Chautauqua Mall, I don't know exactly where it was in the process, but there was a lot of development plans for that area and they were on a shutdown. So there was that. There was two other things that happened that maybe a little bit later on that, that helped. The federal government, when they passed the Clean Waters Act, had a 50% sharing of the cost. They also had rules. If you, if you didn't share for everything. But then, and the state had a 25% match, so that meant the local governments only had to work deal with 25% of the cost. That made it much more possible. So Fred Madison and Dick Evans and guys that were where my dad was, I don't think he was in the county but supervisor board then, but they got together and they created the South uh, District. I'm not sure the center was created then. It, it came a little later, I think. But that you go take over from there. Well, the the sewer district was actually created in 1969, which was three years before the federal government passed the Clean Water Act. Um, so the the funding for the district when it was created was was very problematical. But with the inception of the Clean Water Act, as Raleigh pointed out, then that became uh, a much more achievable goal uh, to create the and actually build the sewer districts. And as Raleigh pointed out, at that time, uh, there was a sewage treatment plant in Lakewood, there was a sewage treatment plant in West Ellicott, and there was a sewage treatment plant in Celeron. And each of those plants were less than 50% effective in removing the biological constituents and the nutrients from the waste um, compared to the current South and Center Chautauqua Lake Sewer District treatment plant in Celeron, which is 98% effective. Um, and at the time, the collection system was very leaky, uh, so there was a lot of groundwater that got into the collection system, which tended to overflow into the septic treatment plant. Um, so the way that they dealt with it at that time was that they put overflow pipes from the collection system directly into the lake. So when we had a lot of gr high groundwater and the collection system was surcharging, the overflow just went directly to the lake. So there, there was this idea was the creation of the South Sewer District first and what was its geography? Do you remember what the geography was? I know it covered Celron, Lakewood, portions of the town of Ellery. How far out did it go on Fluvanna? Do you, do you remember? I, I think that, well, where, where it ended up, how it, how it got there, I'm, it ended up at the John Cheney farm became the uh, boundary. John wouldn't give an easement to go across his farm. So that means that the sewer uh, line had to come up to the state highway right away. That changed things, there were cost overruns involved with that and everything else. But the Cheney Farm also then defined the center in South Districts as I understand it here. Maybe that's an oversimplification, but. Well, I, I wasn't involved and my recollection of that history is, is not good, but from stories I did hear, and perhaps Tom Rillinson could fill in some of this, um, was that there, the original plans was for a treatment plant in the center district and a treatment plant in the south district. And that Tom's head's going up and down, so it must be I had that right. So over time, those plans changed and they eliminated the treatment plant in the center district and they conveyed all the sewage down to the treatment plant in Celeron. Now, things didn't go that smoothly along the way. There, in fact, were some bumps, some construction concerns, stoppage of, uh, uh, of the actual project, and that's hence that was your boss's encouragement for you to get involved. Do you remember why all that happened? The, they actually changed the construction design, didn't they? Well, I'll, let me take a whack at, at this. Uh, you know, it's easy to blame somebody. How many years later is it? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Bill Parman, I talked to Bill Parman, who uh, you know, some of you know, he used to be our assemblyman, but before that, he was the director of public works for Chicago County. And uh, uh, Bill basically said that uh, the first crack at building the South District and the cellar run plant had defective engineering plans. It was uh, 
it was a firm by the name of Metcalf and Eddie, I think, was involved. And they didn't do any plasticity tests, if that's a correct way to define it. They, they had assumed they could go down 40 feet and the friction of the soil would hold the pilings. But they didn't, they should have gone in and done a test boring because in Celeron, it's 90 feet of quicksand before you hit bedrock, okay? So the, the, uh, it didn't work. The pilings kept going. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're talking about double, triple the cost of stabilizing the plant on bedrock. Um, and it was, uh, I don't think, there was a lot of political blame throwing going around because at about that time, this concerned citizens group got started with Bud Rapp, Democratic mayor of Lakewood, and Bob Stanley, a Republican from Bemis Point, raising cane about it. Oh, cost overruns, and this is going to cost the public too much money, and Maybell's ripping us all off, and all that kind of thing was going on. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is that uh, it was a defective engineering study, and there was also, I think, one that was defective up where the uh, near Goose Creek, where they were going to put a pump station, and they also couldn't get to the bottom up there <laughs> with, with what they expected. So. Uh, this led to cost overruns, and that's what stopped the project. I mean, all of a sudden, the county had gone out and got bonds for a certain amount of money, and it wasn't going to be enough. So, uh, I think it was when Joe Girasi was first, uh, was he chairman of the legislature then? And uh, it basically got shut down then. Um, in addition to that, um, at that time, as we pointed out earlier, was not too long after the Federal Clean Water Act had been in effect, and the funding from that was flowing freely. So the construction projects that were being bid were coming in far, far above the engineer's estimates. And so the, in addition to the problems that they had with the treatment plant, um, they were also running into problems with a lot of the deep gravity lines and the bids were coming in way, way over. So the projections of the total project cost were far, far more than what was authorized. So the state actually stepped in and shut down the project. And the reason that the citizens got involved is at that point we had a treatment, brand new treatment plant with some collection and transmission system, but not the total project. Okay. Wasn't there also kind of a reevaluation of the sewer technology from the original plants? They, they kind of yeah, I, I was going to mention that when, uh, when he brought it up. The original design, you know, was for gravity sewers. That's the old-fashioned way to build a sewer. You lift it up, gravity flows downhill, go down another 30 feet, lifting plant, lift it up, let it flow downhill. Well, that works fine if you got, you know, you're in New York City and you've got millions of people using the system. But up here, where you've got a limited number of people using the system, it, the, the cost got out of control. I mean, the expense of it. So, and part of the system redesigned eventually it was vacuum or there was pressure lines, which meant you got to get below the frost level, but you don't have to do this lifting and dropping, lifting and dropping. And, uh, so yes, there was a redesign uh, when it did get shut down. Don't you think, Pierre, at that time was, I don't know when they did it, but it got redesigned. Well, that was when I got involved and the Citizens Advisory Committee, um, we actually were working with the county to see if we could uh, bring the project back. And we solicited for engineering proposals as to how they would recommend we proceed and one of the proposals that turned out to be the most attractive to us was from a firm in Buffalo um, that uh, proposed a vacuum system. That was very difficult for us to get our arms around because at that time there was only one vacuum sewage collection system in the United States. Um, this was a technology that was used often on cruise ships um, but had not been employed uh, widely in the United States outside of one system in, in Maryland um, but we investigated and uh, the costs were significantly lower so we hired uh, the, actually at that point then the county reconstituted the 
sewer board, and I believe Tom was appointed at that time as well, as myself, and we proceeded to hire uh, Malcolm Kearney to design the system for us, and we implemented the system. And at that time, the you had a did you have a south and a center combined sewer district? So it was the body that was governing this was a county appointed uh, a group of citizens for those two districts. Yes, that's correct. Just out of curiosity, there are other now other districts around the lake. Were they in place at that time, or were you the first? Uh, the the North Chautauqua Lake Sewer District came later, okay. uh, after the mm -hmm. South and Center Chautauqua Lake Sewer Districts were in construction to complete the project. Yeah, by the way, I, I, a name I'll throw in here, uh, I think, as a person who had vision for this, was John Lundsman. I think he was involved in creating these districts. He was the county planner. There's a bunch of uh, videos of him sometimes on that uh, TV program you're on up in Mayville, Greg. Uh, John was, uh, he was a straight shooter. I mean, he, he believed in the lake. He believed in what had to be done. Bill Parman told me that the, when, when the North District was created, this is a little trivia, but he was a planner then for John Lundsman, assistant planner working in the planning department. And John said, you know, we gotta get this, 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 this application in for the North District and it's got to be in by 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Work all night on it and get it up to Buffalo. Parmet said he walked into City Hall in Buffalo where they were taking those applications 20 minutes before the deadline. <laughs> Otherwise, who knows if the North District would have happened. I mean, these little things have to go on. And Lundsman was the guy, you know, who kept track of this stuff. I mean, i got to give John Lundsman credit. He was always a, sort of a hero to me. Um, he wasn't the most politically astute guy. He could get himself in trouble, but he, he, uh, he, he never worried about the facts with John Lundman. He, when, when he said it was true, it, that's basically what was going to happen. So I, I tip my hat to John Lundman in, in absentia, of course. So today, Pierre, you're, you're now on the board, having been a past chair, et cetera, of those South and Center Chautauqua Lake Sewer District. What, what's, what's the boundary of you got the south and then you have the center just as we're kind of moving our way around the lake what's where does the the boundaries of that well the the boundary of the south chautauqua lake sewer district uh, starts on the uh, west side of chautauqua lake it actually uh, extends as far up as asheville boces and it extends down through uh, lakewood West Ellicott, Saleron, and then it crosses the lake and starts at Fluvanna uh, area and extends up through, as Raleigh pointed out, the Cheney Farm, to the Cheney Farm um, on the east side of the lake. Then the center Stock Lake Sewer District begins on the other side of the Cheney Farm and extends up through Midway Park. Just out of curiosity, what was it like to construct it, the line under the lake? I mean, did you, what, what was that dynamic? That was a, a large engineering challenge because um, if you can imagine that the flow from the east side of the lake, from all the way from Midway Park down to Fluvanna, which then crosses under the Chattacoin in a pipe, um, in the winter, there's not a lot of flow in that pipe. And in the summer, there's a lot of flow in that pipe. Um, also, the constituent of the, um, of the base of the river, as Raleigh was pointing out, is essentially very similar to jello. <laughs> and so the, the line had to be below water level um, so that it wasn't restricting boat traffic um, but the line was too heavy to be supported by the sediments and when it was empty it was too light <laughs> so that it would float 
And so that, that line is anchored and supported in a, in a very unique way. Now, Greg, you didn't give me a chance to finish the story about building the, the vacuum system and the way we completed the project, because that's something that we worked very hard on and we're very proud of the results because, as I said earlier, the estimates to complete the project were far, far above the project cap. Um, so it, that's why it was shut down. When we brought in the innovative and alternative technology with vacuum sewers, um, we actually received additional state funding because it was innovative and alternative technology. But we completed the project below the project cap, the original project cap, and we wound up extending more sewers than was in the original plan. So the, the sewer district board and the sewer district staff and our engineers worked very hard on that and did a fabulous job. And I would like to give credit to one of the names that Raleigh mentioned earlier, and that is Bob Stanley who was very active in the concerned citizens, being concerned about the cost overruns from the original project. He joined the sewer board and worked tirelessly to reduce costs and come up with innovative proposals to build the system as effectively as possible. Well, I, I uh, never knew that. You know, Bob Stanley, uh, was always a political opponent in my world, and I uh, I never knew that Bob was uh, helped on that, so I give him credit for it. I mean, it, it, but Pierre, just just to wrap that up, some of that vacuum system was converted eventually to pressure, wasn't it? Or how? What's what's the situation now? Or is it still in place? Well, the South and Center Stock Lake Sewer Districts have a combination of some gravity transmission, some pressure, and some vacuum. Um, but to my knowledge, none of the vacuum system was ever converted over to pressure. The vacuum system that is there is maintained and run. Um, the technology really didn't catch on too well in the rest of the country. Um, so our vacuum system is still one of the few in existence in the country. Um, the vacuum systems tend to be uh, expensive and difficult to maintain. Just as an aside, for those who want to go online, there's a, there's a wonderful chart explaining exactly what uh, both Raleigh and Pierre have, have given us a narrative on. Um, with regards to the funding of the project, what was the total cost and how was it funded? Well, I'll, I'll give you some round numbers that Bill Parma gave me, and you can correct anything you want to, Pierre. But. Uh, the original, when they started this, the county had issued, I think, around $18 million in bonds for the local share. I mean, where there were other <coughs> sources of revenue, obviously. But, uh, but when they ran into trouble with the plant and the overruns, $18 million wasn't going to do it. So the county legislature, I'll give them credit, Bill Evans, I think, may have been on the, on the legislature then here. I don't know, but they, they uh, they upped it to 21 million based on the police powers, as I understand. That's what Parman explained to me. Though. Well, what law is going to allow you to raise the bond issue? Well, we, we, we have police powers, public safety, sort of like saying the First Amendment gives us the right to do it or something. So they did it. And then when I got to Albany, one of my jobs was, was to validate what the county had done when we had to pass state legislation to say, all right, what the county did was legal and da 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 da. So I got involved in that kind of stuff then. Uh, the only other uh, thing on finances that I know anything about, and I'm going to turn it over to Pierre, is that there was a lawsuit brought against the engineering firm relative to that plant down there and, and their, their bad uh, tests. The department told me the federal government, even though they contributed 50%, wanted nothing to do with this lawsuit. They didn't think it was going anyplace. The state was a, one of the defendants. The county sued the EFC <laughs> along with the engineer. Finally, the Environmental Facilities Corporation, the state corporation, that had funded all this, it flowed through them. They got themselves out of the lawsuit. 
and nobody thought this lawsuit was going anyplace. Well, it ended up the county got a settlement from the insurance company, I guess, for $1.3 million. And Bill said that was significant in keeping the local costs down uh, so that the user fees were reduced, so that it also politically helped with the public. In other words, the public wants lower fees. What's it going to cost me every year? That's what they're interested in. So that's a little bit about what I was told about the general financing. But you were there, so you can clean up what I've said that's wrong and do what you want to do. <laughs> well, Greg, I've got to admit that my memory isn't what it used to be. At least that's the way I remember it. But um, I was thinking today, trying to remember what the total project cost was, and I have to confess, I don't remember. You now have currently the, the South and Center Sewer District. You've, got the, you've, you've identified the boundaries. Uh, the treatment plant is in the village of Selron. So if you go through the village of Selron and you're on Jones and Gifford Avenue, it's, it's off to the right there. Um, and now it's funded just by user fees. I mean, it's, there's no other financing there? The, the district that was, was built um, in the 80s was financed with 30-year bonds, and those have all been paid, and so the district has no debt. Um, so it is paid for entirely by the user fees. Could you describe, Pierre, since you've got the mic, uh, aside from the normal house users, residents, who else uses it? I mean, is this everybody, commercial, manufacturing? Do you, have, do you, do you accept everything? Yes. <laughs> uh, that, that's, a, that's a sewage joke, but... <laughs> <laughs> is Warfritz laughing? I want to know. Tom, Tom's laughing. <laughs> I'm just noticing what I'm talking about. Um, but we have households, um, we have commercial establishments, stores, retail establishments, we have factories. Um, we actually extended uh, service up to Cummins Engine Plant. Um, they're one of our large customers. Um, we extended uh, sewer service uh, up to Southern Tier Brewery. They're one of our large customers. We extended service up to the Castelli cheese plant. They're one of our large customers. So the constituent of the sewage that presents to the treatment plant is a vast combination of everything from household wastes and things that you can imagine that people put down their drains in their homes to what comes out of factories um, that use many types of chemicals and many types of chemical processes um, to cheese factories and beer breweries and distilleries and engine plants and so it's a it's a it's a big it's a quite a combination of constituents that present to the treatment plant. Let me let me interrupt just uh, here you keep it on him if you want to but anyway. One of the issues uh, that you faced on the sewer board, and Jim Warford is on it now, I guess Tom Burlinson on the sewer board again down at the like, South Center District, is that the plant was really designed for capacity, but not necessarily for all this unique type of waste. I mean, you know, food plants, beer companies, they produce waste that it, the plant wasn't really originally designed for. So you've had to do some pretreatment and other things to make it all work. It's not been just a simple, yeah, send the sewage down to us. I mean, it has some, some work has to currently go into making it all work, right? Yes. Um, I make it sound easy. Um, the staff at the treatment plant does a, a fabulous job. Um, and they work with our major customers uh, to try and uh, figure out what their waste flow is and help them um, limit the amount of, of uh, concerns that present to the, the treatment plan. Um, in some cases those challenges are large and difficult, in other cases they can be relatively simple. Um, as simple as a uh, small factory uh, not too long ago 
uh, was convinced to use a different cleaning product in some of their equipment, which had an incredible amount of phosphorus in it. And so overnight at the treatment plant, we saw a huge spike in phosphorus um, in, the, in the waste flow. And tracking that back, it was to one company, and it was a result of just the cleaning products that they had started using. So the, the staff does an incredible job of monitoring the, the waste um, and the constituents in the treatment process and working with our customers to try and, and mitigate the detrimental effect of the treatment plant as best as they can. One of the foremost ardent advocates for the sewer has been your sidekick here, Raleigh Kidder. In the Jamestown Post Journal in December, he said, the county received notice that the state of New York had approved an additional three million towards the cost of extending sewers up the west side of Chautauqua Lake as far as Stowe. This means the south and center Chautauqua Lake sewer districts can now begin in earnest the final plans for design and construction. And though there are a lot of people who can take credit, Raleigh pointed out that his observation, the driving force behind this effort has been this quiet, relentless work of Pierre Shagnon, the county legislator who represents both the town of Ellery and the town of Harvey. <laughs> it is his district, consisting of townships on both sides of the lake, which will be most impacted. I don't, I'm not asking you to react to that, but could you explain what it is that you can if you'd like? You could, you know, take a bow or whatever you like. <laughs> but really, what was Raleigh talking about here as far as the, the three million, and where is the extension going to be? Well, the, the that story really begins uh, five years ago, um, when I was a newly elected legislator, uh, then representing the town of Ellery and the town of North Harmony, and Vince Horrigan was the newly elected county executive, whose seat I took on the legislature, who had served on the South and Center Stock Lake Sewer District Board of Directors. And Vince came to me shortly after I was elected and said, I want to complete the sewers around Chautauqua Lake. Are you with me? And I said, well, let's see. Um, the next step up the west side of the lake is the town of North Harmony, which I represent. So yeah, I guess I'm with you. Um, so that, that's really where it began. So that's when we started the effort to develop a comprehensive uh, sewage management plan for Chautauqua Lake, um, which led to us prioritizing what actions should be pursued next, um, which we identified as the uh, section from where the South District ended at Asheville Boses up through the hamlet of Stowe, um, and then eventually the goal was to continue on from there up through up to Prendergast Creek, which is where the North Chautauqua Lake Sewer District begins. So that would complete the entire sewage systems on the west side of the lake. Um, we also convinced the town of Chautauqua to start pursuing actions on the, the north side of, of or the east side of Chautauqua Lake. So we did a um, application for a grant to begin the process to do a study um, and we then started applying for grants to bring in the funding and we were successful in securing uh, for that phase one project up through the hamlet of Stowe, we were successful in securing 0% 30-year financing through the Environmental Facilities Corporation and a $5 million uh, water quality improvement program grant, um, which left us about $3 million short of enough funding to bring the user fees in this district extension uh, within the state controller's affordability limit. Um, so this past year, we were successful in another grant and finally receiving the $3 million that we needed to complete the funding uh, to make the project affordable. Um, so now it's, it's, it's a go. And uh, the sewer districts, we have 
county legislature has formed the district. We had to extend the South District boundaries, legal boundaries, up through the hamlet of Stowe. Um, that has been completed, and the sewer districts have now contracted for the design for the construction of the system. With construction to hopefully begin when? Well, maybe Tom or Jim could answer that better because they're much more deeply involved with those technical aspects than I am, but I believe the plan is that the design will occur in 2019, and then in early 2020, we would be bidding for construction, and construction begin in 2020. Have that right, Jim? Jim is saying we don't know for sure yet, but that's that's roughly well, what the intentions are. And so, how does that actually work? So you're going to run the line, the main line, up to Stowe, and then there are a lot of obviously houses that have septics system. And uh, is there local law or county law which says well, if you have access to a uh, sewer that uh, you need to get off the septic? Yes, there's there's a local law um, that if your uh, source of septic is within, Tom, I'm looking at you, 250 feet of, of a sewer line, a public sewer line, you have to connect to it. Okay. So that'll be a sort of a mandated thing the County Department of Health is going to send out notices and saying, hey, uh, within a certain time period, you have to connect. Is that yes? Okay. You know, though, the part of the issue of public opinion, Greg, is uh, people are going to get their first bills and say, "Ooh, I didn't think it would be you know, this." Uh, but I mean, um, as Pierre said, it had to meet the state controller's uh, estimate. I think the estimates are around nine hundred dollars a year, aren't they? Something like that, and. It's people are going to gasp at it probably, but the thing is, if you took four hundred dollars, which they pay on the other side of the lake for sewer service, in today's dollars, it'd be twelve hundred, not nine hundred dollars, or something like that. So really, it's going to be a, a, a fair. And I'll tell you the other thing that's going to happen on the west side of the lake. People won't believe it until it happens. Is the values of their property will go up because when you've got hundred foot lots with septic systems that aren't working, it decreases the value of your property. To it's not just a health issue. I mean, it's there's, there's economics involved. I think the values on Bemis went up 20 or 30 percent, didn't they? After this one and over there, I mean, it, it went up substantially. Yeah. So now that, in addition to that's the South and Center Sewer District, there is the North Chautauqua Lake Sewer District. Uh, I was given a, a little bit of a crib sheet by Randy Perry down at the. Uh, and he talked about that being where the treatment plant upgrades to reduce phosphorus, phosphorus in a fluid entering the lake are complete, 2018. Decommissioning and conversion to a pump station of the Chautauqua Heights treatment plant are in progress. And a sewer district extension is approved but in process of securing necessary funding to move forward. Is that a separate board up there, the North Chautauqua Lake Sewer District? How does that work? Well, you're mixing a couple of groups there, but the, there is a North Chautauqua Lake Sewer District that is governed by a separate board, um, has its own director. Um, you're also bringing in the Town of Chautauqua Sewer District, um, which basically uh, deals with the uh, Chautauqua Heights condominium development and the properties near the lake from there. Um, so the action that was taken uh, at the treatment plant, the $3 million project, was to bring that plant in compliance with their new speedies permit, which required 95% removal of the phosphorus from their effluent. That project is completed and the plant is functioning very nicely in accordance with its speedies permit. Uh, so that is completed. Um, the town of Chautauqua took the initiative to uh, rather than upgrade their small package treatment plant for the Chautauqua Heights uh, development, they decided to 
decommission that plant and put in a pump station and extend a, a, a transmission line up to the North Chautauqua Lake treatment plant in Mayville. So that project is underway. Um, it will be transversing across properties uh, between the town of Chautauqua Sewer District and the North Chautauqua Lake Sewer District. So the town has now extended their district through that area and they are now seeking funding to build a collection system in that area which would then complete the sewer systems from the, as I said earlier, the Prendergast Creek uh, where the North Chautauqua Lake Sewer District begins up through Mayville down around all the way to just north of Point Chautauqua. It's a convoluted system to try and get sewers around the lake. It's a good thing a guy like Pierre is there and understands it all. Well, that's what you said that, Raleigh. He's, 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 it. he's the guy. You know, relentless, quiet, relentless work of Pierre Shannon. Uh, there's also a, we're here at, uh, in the Chautauqua Institution, there is a is there a Chautauqua Utility District? Chautauqua Utility District has its own sewer district, um, and it has a brand new uh, sewage treatment plant, a state-of-the-art facility um, that was completed last year. Um, and so that uh, district um, actually um, treats the sewage generated in the North Chautauqua Lake Sewer District, portion that is south of the institution. Um, that flows, instead of up to the treatment plant in Mayville, it flows to the Chautauqua Utility District treatment plant in the, at the institution. Which is closer, which makes sense, however, in the future it may go to Mayville, right? That sewage down there. To be determined. To be determined, because Chautauqua's not sure their plant's big enough to handle Chautauqua Shores and those other places down below the institution. So, if you had to, well, you know, just to kind of maybe segue, Raleigh's December article, he says there's much, it will have hills and valleys and stuff like that, but he concluded it by saying, there is now light at the end of the tunnel, the task of building sewers that will completely surround Chautauqua Lake has begun. Boom. Bada bing. Is, do you, are you there? Are you confident of that? Do you feel good about where we are at this point? Is, is Vince Horrigan in the room? <laughs> <laughs> um, this was Vince's dream. This was his goal. And I've been working hard at it for five years now. Um, as Raleigh said earlier, things don't happen easily. Things don't happen quickly. Um, but uh, we've made a lot of progress in, in five years. Um, we've accomplished things that uh, people told us could, couldn't be done, um, which is something that I like to accomplish. Um, but am I confident that we'll, we'll get there, that uh, the entire perimeter of Chautauqua Lake will have public sewers? Um, I wouldn't say that I'm confident of that, but I haven't given up. I'm still working hard at it. Let me, let me just throw this in, uh, Greg. Uh, one of the reasons that things are happening, though, is because when you've got these districts and townships and all that, by the fact that the county's involved helps a lot because the county is the overriding jurisdiction. But under New York law, you have to create these user districts. So it's complicated. And, you know, the local town boards and stuff, they sort of shake their heads and say, oh, we can't get into that. We don't understand it. How do you do it? Blah, blah, blah. So that when the county gets involved, now you've got the planning department, you've got engineers, you've got people doing finance up there. So things can happen. So I, I would, you know, it's important with the work you're doing to get the county involved. I, I just wanted to throw that out. And, and uh, Greg, I just wanted to, I was looking at my notes here to, before I came up here, I, I had a few highlights. You know, the public opinion is important in something like this. If the public is against it or they think it's too expensive, then I don't care how you slice it, it's not going to be easy to do. And back in the days when they were having the hearings and the overruns and all that in the South District, there was, Greg God told me there was an old World War II veteran by the name of Bob Dewey. 
and he said he, he would come to all the meetings and after everybody was screaming and yelling about how it can't be done, too expensive, blah, 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 Dewey would get up and say, listen, we fought World War II, we can get this done. <laughs> I think Bob Dewey is, is, not, is in the grave, but I mean, I just thought I'd throw that out, little vignette. There was another guy that was involved, Ted Smith, who was a professor at JCC, and uh, Ted was the, when the Democrats took the county legislature in 1972, he was appointed to the South District. That's the, the, the board, though, that got in trouble with the uh, fact that the engineering thing didn't work. And so Ted ended up, uh, when they abolished the board, of course, they abolished uh, what he was doing. But I always had a good feeling about Ted Smith. He, his heart was in the right place. and. He got caught up in that first go around over. The overruns happened. Uh, and then what did I, one other thing I wanted to mention. Oh, this is, this, this is the way politics happens. So the sewers are shut down. Nothing's going on. Your boss is coming to you saying, you got to get involved, you know, that kind of thing. So Joe Girassi, who's the chairman of the county legislature, he calls up Bill Parmet. And he says, you gotta meet me for lunch at my house. So, Parmet says, I didn't wanna go to that meeting. He said, because I was already buried with the county landfill at the same time the county was building a landfill. Of course, people in the town of Ellery and around Bemis are going nuts about that. And Bill Parmet's trying to horse that thing through. So he goes to lunch up at Jurassic's house in Lakewood. And Joe Jurassic, this retired Supreme Court judge, he's not here tonight, but I don't think he'd deny this, because. Why would he? He said, Bill, I'm going to give you the sewers. You got to get the thing going. And then he said, we'll get the Republicans involved too. We'll put them on the sewer board. <laughs> so anyway, but Bill said, oh, he said, all of a sudden, all those hearings and stuff were at, and of course, he became the focal point of the news <coughs> letters to the editor and all this stuff that goes on when people are having a fight, you know, and, um, now he doesn't even live around here anymore, but at the time, uh, he was sort of a go-to guy who had to do the tough, some of the tough work. So I, I did want to uh, give Bill a little uh, tip of the hat because, you know, politics comes down to personalities and people get involved or they don't get involved and things happen or they don't happen, so. Greg, if, if, you, if you have time for one story since I have to keep up with my friend here, but um, <laughs> Good this, luck. this is relevant. But uh, three years ago, when George Borello and I took our first trip to Washington to see if we could figure out how to get some money out of Washington, uh, I went with the objective to try and get money to complete this phase one of the of the sewage process, uh, the, the sewer district extension up through Stowe. Um, so. We got a meeting with uh, the EPA, and lo and behold, uh, we found out that the head of finance for the EPA was going to be in the meeting. Well, that was great, just the guy I wanted to talk to, right? So, meeting started, he wasn't there. Halfway through the meeting, he comes running in, apologizes for being late, says he's behind schedule. He says, I've got five minutes, talk fast. George starts talking to him about the harbors on Lake Erie, and he says, I'm not interested, what else you got? He says, George says, Pierre, tell him about Chautauqua Lake. And he looks at me and he goes, Chautauqua Lake? Upstate New York, near Buffalo. He says, I've been there. I said, really? Why were you there? And he said, before I came here, I was the head of finance for the Environmental Facilities Corporation in <laughs> Albany. And 35 years ago, we financed a sewer project around Chautauqua Lake. And I said, isn't that interesting? I said, 35 years ago, I was the chairman of the sewer board when we built that project around Chautauqua Lake. Well, we were like old buddies from prep school then. <laughs> Now bear in mind, he told us he had five minutes. An hour later, he apologized for keeping us so long, and he gave me the roadmap how to get the funding to build the project. And now, three years later, here we are. And, and you just <laughs> and, and uh, just reading an article, uh, March twenty second, regarding officials meet with Schumer and EPA. Uh, 
just a follow-up on, was it 18 to 20 million you're trying to get? We're talking about phase two now, and EPA um, clearly has got the message that we're serious about this now, after coming back for our third visit, and they were full of innovative ideas that uh, could potentially help us with phase two. But more importantly, interesting to me is that their technical people were really interested in what we were doing and how we were doing it because they want to obviously help other communities across the country replicate what we're doing here. So that their technical people wouldn't let me out of the meeting. George practically abandoned me and left me there. So now as we get towards closure here and you talk about the you got the Chautauqua Lake sewer projects. That was our theme for tonight. And what is it that you can kind of, not a qualitatively or maybe even quantify as far as users, numbers of users, uh, effectiveness of principal goal, I suspect, is to remove phosphorus out of the lake system from the septic systems. Can, can you kind of give us a, a scorecard of what maybe has occurred since 1970s? Um, I don't know that I can really quantify the, the difference between what was and what is, but, but Greg, not quantitative, but qualitative, and, and Tom experienced this as well as I did, if not more so, is that we had people that would come to us when we were building the, the sewer system and and tell us, you, you have to do something because I can't flush the toilet more than twice in my home without overflowing my septic tank. And my children can't swim in the lake and my grandchildren can't swim in the lake because of all the human excrement that floats by. And you have to do something. Those people were so amazed at what a difference the sewage collection system made and they, I would see people on the street and they'd come up and hug me and thank me for what we did because they never worried about their septic tank anymore. Their children and grandchildren could swim in the lake. They no longer feared what was going to be floating by their homes. Let me just add one thing to what Gary said. You know, in government, and I was in it years ago, but uh, the toughest money to get is stuff that's buried. You can't cut ribbons for that kind of stuff. I mean, it's not like a highway or a bridge or a building. <laughs> so it's one of the difficulties of building sewers, I think, and water systems, that kind of thing has always been that it is buried. It, we expect it to be there. We turn the faucet on. We flush the toilet. But then people forget about it. When they get out and drive their car, well, if there's a pothole or something, they see it, and then they, they're all over. Uh, so I think that one of the innate problems of doing this type of infrastructure work is that it's hard work. It's, it requires focus over more than an election cycle. It takes more than four years, more than eight years to get these things done. And that makes it tough. It's not easy. Pierre, I'm going to give you the last word. Uh, you not only are intimately involved with the South Center Sewer District, Chautauqua Lake Alliance, a variety of things, but you're also going to be part of a, a news conference tomorrow. I'm not asking you to disclose anything because that's the prerogative of the county executive. But in the big scheme of things, how does the sewer projects and you've got also all of the other in lake projects and opportunities there are consolidated and how, how, how does this all mesh together can you give us kind of a pierre shagnan overview well my personal overview would be and i think i've said these words in this seat before but um when i was elected to the county legislature um, i realized that my district uh, had roughly 50% of the lakeshore of Chautauqua Lake in my district. So Chautauqua Lake became a huge priority for me. So I am interested and concerned and trying to help anything that can help Chautauqua Lake. 
And that led me into involvement again with the sewers. Um, I got back on the sewer board after having been off the sewer board for many years. Um, it got me involved with other initiatives uh, to try and, and help the lake. Um, so what wraps it all together for me, Greg, all these different initiatives that are going on is something that a good friend of mine keeps reminding me of, and that is, it's about the lake, stupid. When we get wrapped up on technical details and we get wrapped up on disagreements and we get wrapped up on all these other discussions, the grounding point is, it's about the lake, stupid. We're trying to help the lake. Then I'm going to really conclude with a quote from Raleigh Kidder in his, one of his dis, late December articles when he talked about the number of initiatives that you just talked about and he said, if there is a silver lining to all of this, it is the reality that the ultimate goal of cleaning up Chautauqua Lake and making it a better lake now has more voices than ever. And with that, we say thank you to Raleigh Kidder and to Pierre Shagnon. Yeah, one, one final thing, and that is, let's everybody sing happy birthday to Judy, because we got a group from committing Barbiers already. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Judy. Happy birthday to you. <laughs>